Hi Hoover, how are you doing? Thank you for uploading your pictures. Um, I'm a little confused. This you you sent this in saying um, that I told you to redo, which I did. Uh, but look, the, the nothing changed here. The stats are all exactly the same. So I would it, it's I thought it was kind of clearly explained in the um, in the homework video of class five. But it's really important to get this, so this isn't considered. I mean that it it's not. I'm, I go back for the go back to the homework class of class five. It's only a few. It's only like about three minutes or so. Um, and and try and do this again because it this isn't this wasn't what we were. This isn't at all. There's nothing to talk about here because it's you just didn't change any of the stats. These all these stats are meant to be completely different for each picture. So maybe you made a mistake or maybe you uploaded the wrong pictures or something. Um, but try again, because it's so important to get this. Um, it's so important to get this right. I could, I suppose I could explain it to you. For example, if you were to change, you know, I think it's better that you, that you redo it. Um, but you do, you really do need to get this. It's a very important part of photography to understand this. Um, so have a, have another try. I'm happy to look through your pictures again. Um, okay. So let's jump through one second. Let's look at these. Oh, these are great. One second. And then let's just order these quickly. These look great. Um, and one second, let's put these over here. Um, okay, let's just hear what you wrote here. I'm still a bit confused about raw versus JPEG. Okay, raw versus JPEG is a little bit, it is tricky to understand. Uh, when would I use each? For this homework, I used raw when the pitch had a greater diversity between the highlights and the shadows. That's exactly, exactly the reason, the main reason why you'd use raw. Also, if the white balance is very difficult, it could be a it could be a good idea to use raw. But the biggest point, the most important point, is when there's a big discrepancy between the highlights and the shadows. For example, here. So this, however, would probably be too much for raw to handle. Okay, let's open this one second. Let's have a look. Um, open this in Lightroom. One second import <clears throat> see the difference in the preview look how dull and horrible that is and how much more vibrant it is in Lightroom because <coughs> Lightroom is, is designed to deal with raw pictures so now let's see if we can bring back the um, let's see if we can bring back some of this area here I don't think that it's going to handle it so well you see it's too much it's too much. It, this is such a good example of when raw would be necessary that it wasn't even. It doesn't even. Uh, it doesn't even work. We could try again. If I paint over here, let's just see what happens. Let's see what that looks like. There we've painted it. Now we can drop down the highlights again. But you can't do it. It's, this is too much for raw to handle. It's really is too much for raw to handle. So this is a great example um, of like the concept of raw. But like I said, this is just too much. It, the, the, it's the the discrepancy between the highlights and the shadows is too much even for raw. All the more so for for JPEG. So you you've got that. You've you've understood that. That's great. Okay, and this is an example of no need for raw, and that is a great example. That is perfect. You definitely do not. There's no benefit to shooting this picture in raw. You've got a um, you've got a uh, a very small difference between the highlights and the shadows. Um, excellent, great. Okay, let's go to here. So now this is perfect, fantastic, excellent. That you can see is in the sunlight over there, um, and you've you nailed this. Perfect. So you can, I can see that you took these pictures, these three pictures in the same second. You can see over here, this was taken at seven, whatever the time was, but it was 41 seconds, 42 seconds, and also 42 seconds. So you've done that excellently. Generally, when I'm taking pictures of people running, um, I will be using um, a, a, a landscape orientation. I find that just works better. 
Um, stats are perfect for this picture. These stats are absolutely perfect. 800 ISO giving us a 1 1 2 50th of a second, which means I'm assuming this is your husband. He has been frozen pin sharp. Excellent. Great shot. Okay, now let's look here. We've got. So. I, the question is, I'm not sure if you've labeled these correctly because it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. This one makes sense. Sun, cloud, and AWB. Oh, that's in the right place. So that, this doesn't make sense. I'm wondering if you maybe labeled them incorrectly because it has happened in the past before. This one looks more like AWB, which you've called sun. And this one looks more like sun or cloud, um, even though it's written AWB. So I'm not, I, this, this definitely something fun has gone on here. Um, so I'm not, I, the, the basic, the, the rule is as follows that this picture would, this picture looks like AWB, even though you've written sun. So for an AWB, for a picture shot AWB, um, it, it has a tendency to be too cool. If it's too cool, then it's a good idea to flick to sun, which would mean the picture would be looking like this, which is much more accurate. This is a great shot. By the way, nice work on the posing. Very good. Looks very uh, natural and relaxed. It's excellent. Um, but like I said, I think I'm pretty sure, even though you've written sun, this one was AWB. And this one, which you've written AWB, it was probably sun or even cloud. Okay. So I'll show you the the way it goes in regards to the colors is there's this, this, and this is final. So that's the coolest. That's getting a little bit warmer. That's warmer, and that's the warmest. Okay. It, the, 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 um, like I said, I think it's labeled incorrectly. But, but this is the idea, is that the, the rule is like as follows, that by default you should be in sun. Now, what can happen when you're in sun? A regular occurrence is that the pictures are too cool. Okay, they're bluey. They're too cool. If that's the case, then you change to sun. That's you're in sun. Then you change to cloud. Okay, that will warm up the pictures. Now, if the pictures, uh, which doesn't happen so regularly, but if when you're in sun, the picture appears to be too warm, then you go to AWB, which will cool down the picture a little bit. Um, try again. And, and keep track of the nut of the just it's very simple just go out again and just make sure you go AWB the first picture second picture third picture fourth picture because it does not tell you on the um, all it will say in Picasa is um, white balance manual it doesn't tell you if it's AWB. oh one so we can see from here then let's see because it would say automatic white balance manual cloud shade no i i'm sorry i'm i i'm sorry excuse me you're correct i'm wrong it says here white balance auto so i'm not sure exactly what happened the shade one is warmer the sun is cooler so you know what the, the, this must have been that your camera has um somehow cleverly decided to warm up the picture greatly now everything else makes sense because this in this picture sun is the coolest then cloud is less cool which means warmer a little bit and you can see this picture is warmer than this picture and then shade is warmer still so you can see that's clear the only thing that didn't make sense to me was awb and i can see that you did use awb which means your camera um in this situation, it could be that you maybe change something in post, um, but I don't know. I'm not sure about that. But um, your camera in this situation chose AWB to be the warmest. Um, that's very interesting. That is um, that is not a uh, that's not regularly how these cameras work. You have a what do you have? You have a T6. That is not generally what they do. I'm very interested by that. Um, very interested about that. Maybe it was to do with something to do with where you were, to do with how the sun was falling, because it looks like it's late in the day. Um, 
so that could um that could have impacted that okay um let's look one second let's keep going so you did great with that good okay that was perfect perfect okay so here your your um a drop overexposed I appreciate that you started watermarking, watermarking, watermarking your pictures. That's great. Um, you drop overexposed, a little bit less exposure, which means you could drop your ISO down a little bit, and then you'll see a little bit more detail. Although I do kind of like the, um, I do like this, I do like the feel, in a sense, especially that you've gone with this, um, like kind of sepia look. It's interesting. The uh, the effect that you've done is nice. Um, you've just missed the oh no you haven't missed the exposure you've with the uh, the focus that you've you've can you've crushed the picture down in um, in Picasa go to when you go to export I'll like, show you what it looks like when you click on export um, right now your this is probably clicked and it's probably something like this says resize to 800 okay make sure it's use original size okay and that will that will save you from um, crushing down the pictures you've also got this watermark be careful of that even though it's cool you've done that here um, that will annoy your clients if you if you send that to them the nice thing about smug mug which is the which is the website that we recommend for you to use is that it puts a watermark on the image however when the client downloads the image the watermark isn't there okay uh, I love the actual the closeness between the two uh, between the mother I'm assuming mother and daughter yeah this hand is very very important compositionally brings us back here got a great shape excellent very nice um, good close close in your stats are oh, those are drop overexposed the actual the stats are perfect according to what you've done um, you're zoomed in all the way you're at the widest aperture that you can be at um, your ISO is high but that's not really a problem because you're using a decent shutter speed a quicker shutter speed to allow you not to um, not to have camera shake which you didn't have you've done an interesting edit where you've it's it's an interesting picture. I don't know how many people would appreciate this, um, but I do appreciate that. Um, it it's dangerous a little bit with these kind of interesting color edits um, because you can get into trouble with your clients. Um, but great, this is great. I love the the fact that they're very close together. Excellent. Okay. Um, so these is this the same picture? No. Okay. Um, good i she's she's turning inwards which brings our eye in over here he's static which is fine which means we really actually have quite a cool composition okay also comes in like this there's another triangle so we've got good movement from her the, the image is very small again you've crunched it down um so i can't really get into it anymore um stats wise um it's good uh, you've done fine a hundredth of a second can't really see because it's a small picture but a hundredth of a second is okay uh it's a little bit scary there is a chance of get of uh, of the picture being out of um being being not sharp because of camera movement um but you again you're zoomed in you're at the widest aperture uh, this is good. I also very much appreciate the uh, the black and white edit. That's a very good job. There's a lot of energy going on in that edit. Um, I would bring him forward a little bit, maybe, um, and maybe turn her a little bit more to the side, which would give it would minimise her 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 um, her shape that way, and it would give a little bit more movement this way. Um, he could also slightly turn his shoulder this way as well, that would then give you that movement inwards which is what that wasn't very good which is what we're always about in uh family posing generally okay good and now this picture it's a similar it's a similar composition as the last one okay i would get try i know it's difficult because um because of um shaman gear and stuff but again for him to have his shoulder turned this way would definitely help um she's moving inwards anyway that's nice um the also the dark area in the background here has caused that his hat has 
um, kind of bled into the background that isn't good we're trying to always keep a separation between the subject and the background um, good okay this is great let's have a look what can we do in Lightroom let's take one of these pictures into Lightroom what's in like this let's do this let's take this one this we can get a good uh, kind of moody black and white picture here a lot of energy in this one second let's go to import and develop and let's go to black and white okay we'll bring up his skin tones a little bit um i think we'll put the clarity up a drop as well that's great we put up quite a lot actually then we're going to crop in a little bit closer and i think we are going to the vignette a little bit i want to um there we go that's too much with the clarity but i want to raise the exposure a drop on him bit and maybe a little bit of the contrast I think we can just just ban this around this is great good I think another thing that I'm gonna to want to do is we can just have him pop out from the background by let's put an auto mask let's put up the exposure and if we just rim him here like this Or, uh, not like that. One second. Let's erase this. There we go. Mm, it's not so good over there. Drop that down a little bit more. Okay, it just means it just pops out a teen a little bit from the front. That's a great moody picture. That's a lot of energy there. Excellent. Okay, Hoover, good work. And uh, looking forward to seeing what you do for us next week. Okay, all the best.